This is my identity crisis. Welcome back to my channel. And if you've never been here before, I have COVID. Seriously, I literally have COVID. Sorry I've been gone so long. But again, I have COVID. Wear a mask, please and thank you. Just wear it. Today, we are going to talk about the situation going on presently uh, between uh, Smokey Glow and Angelica Oles, and of course, Dustin Daly and Nick Snyder, who involved themselves and have yet to uninvolve themselves. So let's just get into it. My opinions are sort of all over the place on this. I have always liked Angelica. I've always liked Hannah. Um, I still like them both. Spoiler alert. So a few days ago, uh, Angelica and Hannah both made videos on their respective channels uh, in collaboration with each other. Shortly after the release of her video on her channel, Hannah started receiving some backlash uh, for collaborating with Angelica. Angelica has a past. Uh, I don't necessarily think I would call it a pattern, um, but certainly an instance or two of being microaggressive uh, towards people of color. She's also been accused of blocking people of color who have tried to call her out or educate her uh, about how what she was doing was microaggressive. And like I said, of course, Dustin Daly and Nick Snyder inserted themselves and have yet to pull the fuck out <laughs> because of course. This is clearly just a moment of opportunity for Dustin and Nick to sort of uh, air out their grievances in catty, obtuse tweets and videos about Hannah, and it shows. As of the present moment, Nick has made two videos on his channel, Dustin has made one. Um, and in Dustin's uh, thumbnail, look, I'm gonna call it what it is. He chose a really unflattering photo of Hannah and he cherry picked a beautiful selfie from Instagram for Angelica. And I'm not going to be the one that's like, oh, that's that's fat shaming or that's fat phobic or whatever. I'm fat. It's just not my thing. Like, I don't get offended by those things. And I, I it would take a lot for me to be like, wow, that's that's fat shaming. Um, because I, I personally just don't get offended by that. Like calling me fat is just saying facts at my face. So to me, I don't, that switch doesn't turn for me. Um, I'm not saying that, that it doesn't happen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it's not a thing. I'm just saying for me personally, it's not where I go to in my brain, like reactively. Um, but my first instinct was like, okay, well, uh, so for, the slim blonde girl he chose this beautiful photo and then for for the heavier brunette girl he chose um a screen grab of her mid-sentence like that was purposeful and the thing about that is that it's okay that that was purposeful right because clearly uh, bitter betty over here has uh, an issue with hannah and he wants to make his stance in the situation known. He is anti-Hannah and pro-Angelica, so he's going to make Angelica look better because I guess that's what you do. I just think that was a really, really, really petty move. And what's more, someone, well, Hannah called him out for it, um, which I was glad that someone else saw that and I wasn't just being overdramatic. I think that was the point of me saying that I don't subscribe to calling everything like fat phobic or fat shaming. But it was my first thought and it seemed to be Hannah's first thought and it seemed to be a few people's first thought on Twitter as well. Um, someone called Dustin out for it and said, hey, um, how come you use this beautiful photo of Angelica and then chose this photo of Hannah? He's very much, oh, I'll die on this hill. That wasn't on purpose. You know, how is this different from any of her other thumbnails, this, that, and the other? Someone said, well, you could have, you pulled a photo from Instagram of Angelica. Why couldn't you have pulled a photo from Instagram for Hannah? And he said, it wouldn't work. And they said, why? And he said, because of the aspect ratio. 
and this queen in the next tweet proved him wrong. I'm not gonna lie, I'm losing a lot of respect for Dustin Daly because of this. And I know that he doesn't care and he would just tell me to eat a bag of smashed assholes. But I'm sorry, at this point, he just looks like a bitter bitch with a chip on his shoulder, inserting himself into a situation that's as much commentary as Regina George's fucking burn book. So maybe Dustin Daly should eat a fucking calteen bar and maybe sit this one the fuck out. Aside from Dustin and Nick inserting themselves like a virgin, on prom night. Um, Angelica was further being pressed on Twitter after she made a video addressing all of these things um, once Hannah sort of dropped her as a friend. Uh, Hannah basically said, I've received information um, that I didn't have prior about Angelica. I've urged her to make a video. She says she's not looking to do that. I cannot stand by her. Basically, our values don't align. This is where we stand. I'm gonna pull the collab. After that, Angelica did make a video. Um, it was a pretty thorough video. Um, it was a lot of explanation. It was a lot of, this was my intention, but this was how it was perceived. Um, I thought all in all, it was a pretty decent video. Granted, none of the apologies or explanations were for me, um, and they're not mine to accept or reject, um, but from a third party, outsider perspective. I thought it was a pretty well thought out, thorough video for what it was. However, one thing that caught my ear was her saying that Hannah essentially said to her that um, even though people were throwing uh, accusations of transphobia at Angelica, she couldn't substantiate any of them but was going to choose to essentially believe them and go with the crowd anyway. And knowing Hannah's content and knowing of her what I do, it just doesn't, it didn't align. It didn't align with what she does on the internet, much less what she seems to be like as a person. That is very clearly the case because Hannah seemed really, really angry about it when she made a response. Before that happened though, Angelica was on Twitter receiving some backlash from a woman named Diana. Diana was one of the people who made a video about Angelica's microaggressions and kind of brought them to the forefront. And she was still sort of pressing Angelica because in Angelica's video, she pointed out, um, she was trying to make a point um, about her block list, basically. that her block list was not comprised of just people of color um, to sort of try to dispel the rumor that while she was, well, while people of color were trying to educate her on what she had done wrong, that she was throwing, she was just blocking everybody. Um, I believe she said something to the effect of most of the people and she was showing on the screen um, the avatars of a lot of the people that she had blocked. Most of the people that I have blocked are white or white presenting. And Diana took issue with this because she is, she, I believe she's Latinx. Um, I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am. I didn't go back and look, but from what I remember, she was Latina. Diana took great issue with this because I think what Diana heard was all the people that I have blocked are white or white presenting. And Angelica was trying to say to her, listen, that's not what I said. I said that most of the people that I had blocked were white or white presenting. I didn't single you out and say that you were white or white presenting. Um, but regardless, Diana was upset by this. And I think that's fair. I think, you know what? I think when you're, you're the one taking the heat for fucking up, you have to take it at that point. It's not your place to argue every detail because you're in a place where you need to listen and not talk. Even if what is being said about you isn't necessarily a hundo correcto, it's your time to listen, not your time to speak. That's just what I think. I know, I mean, that doesn't mean you roll over and take every allegation that comes your way, but I think in this instance, this is such a small fraction of a difference. I think clarifying your point once and that's it would have been fine. Um. But what happened, in an effort to kind of clear her own name, 
what she actually did was pull up old tweets of Diana's where Diana used the n-word and where she um, had poor shamed quote tweeted it and said this you what she was trying to do here in her own words was to sort of display the hypocrisy of what was going on with Diana what she actually did was display her own hypocrisy when someone in her comments underneath this tweet posted this you shouldn't be using someone being racist or problematic as a gotcha moment which is what's happening now it's like i don't know trisha says something and then dixie's like gotcha you said the n-word um and then trisha comes back and is like gotcha your dad's a republican like it's it's a lot of like trying to use that as like a weapon so once again weaponizing information against people again i want to reiterate i like angelica i like hannah I like them both, and I don't think either one of them are bad people. I don't think either one of them come to the table with any sort of malintent. Um, but I do think they do need to listen. I don't think being right, I don't think defending yourself is always the answer. I think sometimes you have to shut up and listen. And sometimes you have to tell Dustin Daly to stay out of your fucking business. What can we learn from this whole ordeal? And here's what I think. I think there have been a lot of conversations happening here that are good. I think having a conversation with your own community about racial disparity, about racial injustice, about um, trans issues, um, I think they're all important things to talk about. Do I think two cis white people need to be having conversations about what is or is not transphobic? No. Something about trying to expose somebody else while the spotlight of the bad spotlight is on you. That's very telling to how you feel. And that's what worries me about the way that Angelica handled a lot of this. Now, I've never been in this situation before. I can't say how I would react. And trying to pull a why did Hannah delete this video about Trisha Paytas and her whole, um, coming out as transgender video and how suspicious that is that that's just gone while s someone was baselessly but still accusing her uh, Angelica of liking transphobic tweets and all of that so it's the same sort of thing as her tweet at Diana you're weaponizing something that you're being accused of and accusing someone else of doing it and it doesn't make you look better, it makes you look worse. I'm simply saying, I've never done this. Please, if you ever see any instance of me having done this, bring it to my attention so I can address it, is enough. As long as you take that best foot and put it fucking forward, and you do better, and you make the necessary changes you need to make, you're on the right path. You don't have to then drag the other person down to make your point. You don't have to expose Diana's shitty tweets in her past to make your point. You don't have to expose a video that Hannah made that was full of misinformation and that she came off as though all of it was fact when it was not as such. Did she handle that the best? Probably not. She probably should have made a video and said, hey, uh, this video I had about Trisha Paytas, here's all the misinformation in it, here's what I have learned since. I am seeing where this is a damaging video for me to keep up because if someone saw this without seeing anything else, they would think that this was me telling you this as fact, so I'm going to private this video, but this video stands as an addendum to that video and moved on. That, in an ideal world, that would be great. I think in life, we all need to do our very best, right? We all need to do our best to not hurt other people, to not violate anyone else's rights or existences. We don't need to hurt other people in any way. Be kind to one another and treat other people with the respect that they deserve. And I lost my train of thought. Not every situation is going to be handled with the diligence and care that it should be. Is it imperative that we handle things the best way that we possibly can? Yes. It is always okay to want to do better. It is always okay to want to do right by people, 
even people that you don't know, especially people that you don't know. There's always going to be something more you could have done, something more you could have said. There's always going to be a better way to apologize or to pull down that video or to retract that statement. We need to find a balance between holding people accountable and berating them to shit when they fail. Failure happens. People change. We need to be okay with being presented with new information and changing our minds about things. If you see an old tweet by somebody that you're just getting into, you know, you're just starting to watch their content or you're just starting to listen to their music and they had a problematic past, look at the patterns since that problematic past. If it's still a pattern, maybe reconsider your support. If they've changed the way that they view things, if they've changed those problematic behaviors, it's still okay to support people because we're not perfect. I think being sensitive to people's individuality is important. Instead of making everybody fall under this umbrella of perfectness, what am I even talking about anymore? At the end of the day, Dustin Daly will still just be sitting there talking out of his ass no matter what you do. So, just do your goddamn best, okay? I don't ever want to devalue or, um, or invalidate anybody's feelings, especially people with different lived experiences than my own, especially people in marginalized groups. I, I, I do not wish to um, invalidate anybody's feelings or experiences. Um, I just think it would behoove the rest of us um, to make sure that we're doing our due diligence. It's not anybody's job to educate you, but having a conversation is always helpful, at least in my experience. I feel like I'm really talking out of turn now. I need to stop talking. Friendships are hard and sometimes you have to abandon them. If your morals and your views and your values don't line up, your friendship isn't worth a damn anyway. I'm all done here. I have talked for 30 minutes and I am not sure that I said a goddamn thing. If you liked this video, I don't know why. But if you did, please feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like this video, same. Back in the saddle, obviously not doing well. You know, leave me a comment down below saying that I'm a fucking idiot. I will catch you in the next one.